you see currently i'm actually at legon campus and you can see how you can see all the hostels you can see the vegetation around this was somewhere i used to walk i used to walk here like crazy if there's anyone who is a non-student of legon who have ever walked a lot on this campus more than me i'm mentioning it to them. they will arrest that person you understand i'm not a student of legon i am a, i'm actually a student of upsa you understand but i used to bring suits here to come and sell and the way i started selling my suits if they tell you cry you now you'll be shocked so while i was in school in university i was very hungry and i didn't have any money <laughs> this story I, I i told you before and i keep telling you it's sometimes when you are faced with difficulty and your brain will work and because we are not faced with situations most of us grow and we don't think and we can't think much so while we were in school i needed to survive i was in school yeah my parents have paid school fees and stuff but sometimes they don't have money to support me you understand so I needed to do something that will help me or that will support my education. For example, my feeding, my transportation, my handouts, my school booklets to buy and stuff. Uh, so I needed to do something. So one of my brother was also attending a high school and he's, he just got admission. So he gave me 300 Ghana cities that, oh, so that keep this money for me. I'll be going to school. When I return from school, then I take the money from you. I say, fine. So I had this business idea to start selling suits. And I told him, that guy, your 300 Ghana cities is cool. You understand? But I would want you to understand. I want to use it to do business. So that I'm sure by the time you return from school, I'll get your money back. Is that okay? And he said, it's okay. I can use the money. So I actually went to the market, uh, at Medina Market. And I went to the Abochi Abochi people. Uh -huh, Abochi people. And I bought suits from them. Hmm? I bought suits. I bought coats, jackets, I bought the trousers, and I even bought the small jackets, yes. So I bought, I bought like, is this five, and I bought trousers, like also another five. And I went to UPSA Hostel. I started with the UPSA Hostel. So the new hostel that was built at the UPSA, that is the University of Professional Studies. I went there, and then I go door by door. Then I knock the student door. Oh, Charlie, what's up? Everything cool? I guess on suits here, you go buy. <laughs> you know upsa is a business school and you know um they they hold like their appearance in high esteem and our time every monday is official everybody has to wear suits everybody have to wear suits if only you're a student of upsa so and if you're also coming fresh you are in level 100 uh, the, the beginners you we have what we call matriculation uh -huh. so if you don't have a suit Charlie, you can't go for the matriculation and I understood that the market is there, the demand is there. But one thing I also understood is that much as I don't have enough capital to actually go into buying the suits, I also understood that there are some students who are very poor and they cannot buy professional brand new suits. So what I did was to go to Medina Market to go and buy from Abochi Abochi people. Bought jacket and trousers and I came, I was knocking at the door. Chale, I have suit too. Chale, look at the jacket, it's fine. If you wear plus the trousers, for how much? That time to get a brand new suit, it used to be somewhere around um, 250 Ghana cedis. Yes. So I, I was selling, you can buy top and down for me and everything will be like 100 Ghana cedis. So I actually went to the market, the Aboki Aboki people, and I bought suit from them. Like, let's say I'll buy 30, 30 cedis or 30 cedis and then the trousers, 20 cedis. Then I'll come and sell it 100 cedis. So in all, I make like 100% profit. Uh -huh. So people also who bought for me, they also got uh, value, value for money. At the end of the day, they were able to attend the programs and use it for their events at a very cheap price. So if you are spending 250 Ghana cities on a brand new suit, you can actually spend 100 cities or 120 Ghana cities to buy my second-hand suit that I bought from the Medina market from the Aboki people. And that was how I started my suit business. So I started it within a few months. My brother just returned back. When he returned from school, by that time, well, I had a story and I said this and I gave it back to him. And I still have stock and I still have some small change with me. And that was how I started my suit business. And to date, I'm still selling suits. You understand? Though, because of content creation and real estate business, now I've just withheld it. Though, I still have some stocks available. But one thing I want you to know is that while I was in the school, I had one of the biggest challenge and the biggest challenge was that the demand i was not able to you know satisfy the demand of my customers and that is what you need to pay attention whenever you are doing any business anywhere 
the reason is that now the demand have moved from people just wanting to buy suits most of the people who want to buy suit now uh you know they they want professional suit they want brand new suits and my target market has also expanded it has widened it didn't used to be only you student of upsa i've now expanded to student of legon and everywhere so i used to make stickers i came and you know stick it at the campuses i go to legon go and stick my suit uh, professional suits uh, what was suit, uh, corporate suits quality suits then i put my number people used to call me you understand that time we didn't even used to do online uh -huh. barely did we used to do online we just buy buy st uh, staplets buy a, go and do photocopy and we go around and be pasting it so i did it on upsa campus the hostel i come to legon university of ghana's campus and then the hostels i come to staple it there and that was how i used to get my people to buy yeah so that was how the journey started uh-huh so i was not able to satisfy the market because now people do not just want to buy their bulky suit they want the professional one and me too me myself i don't get money to go buy their stock so what did i do i actually went to the accra and then there's a specific place they sell suits and they take it for wholesale and that was where you know i spoke with them then i i'll buy one i bought two from them then when someone wants i ask him of the size if it's not what i have in my stock i just go back to the uh, wholesale and go and change it and then come and deliver it to the person so because of one suit eh, because of just someone wants to buy one suit i can go to accra from medina to accra go and buy that suit and come come and do the come and deliver it to the person and i'll get a profit of like sometimes i used to get like if those times we used to sell the suit at um we used to sell the suit at 250 ghana cities that time we used to pick it from the wholesale around 140 so you can make 100 Ghana CD profits. Sometimes you can make 50 Ghana CD profits on it. And that was how we used to survive while we were on campus. And this, the reason I'm sharing this idea with you is how every African kid can actually survive while they are at a very hard situation. And when you are faced with difficulty, how your mind can actually open. And the struggle is not now. That is why if you watch my videos, you realize that whatever I do, I do it like I do with all my energy. And I do it with all my strength because there's no way out. So if I'm creating a way, I need to take it very serious. And that was how we used to hustle. So what do you do? do you need to pick up from this video? You need to understand that there is nowhere comfortable or there's nowhere. No one is going to save you, especially if you're a man. Nobody is going to save you. If you're a young guy, if you're a young kid, if you have your own brother, you have your own sister, nobody is going to save you. You'll be the one to save yourself. So, and when you have everything at your disposal, you will not think. Let's say your parents are already doing everything for you. They are giving whatever. Chale, you will not think. Uh -huh. But when you are faced with situations and you, are, you, are, you have to be the one to solve your own problems, you begin to think. Your brain will be widened. And things will... <laughs> You will find ways and means to survive. You understand? Uh -huh. Other than going to commit crimes, you you become diligent, and that has actually developed me as a young kid in the as as a young guy in, in the sense that currently, as I'm telling you, whatever I do, I do it with much seriousness because I'm actually on a journey and I've not gotten to my destination yet. And that is one of the stories that I have to share with you. So if this is your first time here, kindly subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to press the bell button. If you want to buy a land in Ghana, if you want to buy a house in Ghana, we have. Uh, properties for sale check in the description of the video you get the playlist that you press on our playlist to check out if you also want to book me to do a due diligence of any land or house you are buying i'm available to do that as well if you also want to book me for consultation i'm available check in the description of the video you get my number that you reach me my name is Imoru Sadat. you're welcome to business trends ghana this is one of the stories you should take home today for your weekend bye subscribe subscribe to talk business